Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. I am Cedric and today we are gonna talk about yeah a classic in Belgium uh, and I might hear some people say Cedric aren't you making it very easy talking about the classics unfortunately no because the classics aren't just one that everybody knows they are the ones that everybody thinks they know and they are the ones with a lot of history and a lot of history means a lot of research and a lot of time on my part um, this is actually a beer that I grew up with uh, when I was younger yeah, I used to drink this a lot I always loved strong blonde beers and this is a strong blonde 8% ABV herbal beer now We are talking about La Chouf and chances are you have seen a La Chouf somewhere. Be it in the supermarket, in a bar, uh, yeah, anywhere. They are very good with marketing, for example. I went out like this several times during the pandemic with the lovely gnome or a kabouter as we say and when I go skiing you'll probably see me skiing around like this with my little bell and my gnome hat bear in mind that I am only five foot two five foot three five foot two with this beard so yeah it really suits me and when we go out in summer I have actually served people dressed like this. I have never worked in a bar where they didn't have La Chouf and you'll have to look quite hard. Yeah, you'll have to look quite hard to find a supermarket in Belgium that doesn't carry La Chouf, even in the Flemish speaking part. Um, story goes, In the late 70s, two brothers-in-law, called Chris Bauerarts and Pierre Gobin, dream, as happens quite often in this branch, dream of brewing their own beer. And yeah, somewhere around 78, 79, they actually start experimenting in their mom's kitchen. Apparently things went well, and in 1981, they found a farm that they could rent or at least a space in a farm that they could rent and they started brewing there officially on august 27 1982 their first batch was born and that would have been la chouf the blonde variant later on they made a dark variant mac chouf but the very first one was la chouf and apparently it was an instant hit because they sold quite a bit and the number crunchers among you will have noticed that i say 82 um, i'm from 87 so i'm 35 right now but it is 2022 so la chouf has its 40th anniversary this year i told you in the last video i would be talking about another anniversary beer this is the classic we will be talking about the anniversary beer next week or in a, in a few weeks anywho so in 82 the first official brew was born and it was a brew of 49 liters meaning a half hectoliter almost it went pretty well and in 1983 they took a few extra steps in 1983 this happy feller was introduced. He's called Marcel and he is the gnome that grew out to be the mascot for the next 40 years uh, for La Chouf. In the meantime they have a whole family, uh, they have uh, amongst others Micheline, Marcel, uh, I believe they have four or five even now and each uh, Matthew is among them as well and they all have their own beer like the Oublon Chouf and yeah you name it anywho La Chouf 
Marcel is introduced and many people believe that this is uh, because of an, an old uh, legend in the Belgian Ardennes. Nope. In 82 there was a tornado in a small village in the French-speaking part of Belgium, L'Eglise, which is not too far from Oufalise, where Brasserie des Chouf is founded. And they were having a uh, an auction and all the proceeds went to the rebuilding of L'Eglise. It was aired on TV and Chris saw a painting of a gnome watching a farm from the tall grass and he thought yeah we don't want anything heavy on our labels we don't want any monks we don't want any of that how about a gnome that would be funny and so he took it to Pierre and he slept on it a few nights and look at where we are now In 1986, so four years after their first official brew, they went full time and they bought the farm that they were brewing in. Uh, they also expanded the brew house and they put in an installation which allowed them to brew 22 hectoliters per brew. Another few years later, 1992, so six years later, Again, they expanded, they put in a completely new brew house and they scaled up from 22 hectoliters per brew to 70 hectoliters per brew, which is quite a bit more. In total, that amounted to a growth from 3,400 to 5,000 hectoliters a year. So by brewing less, less often actually, they could still raise their capacity. Apparently, La Chouf, or Brasserie de Chouf, grew so successful that bigger players on the market started noticing. This was also around the time that Duvel Mortiat uh, legacy was passed on to Michel. And yeah, Michel is a good businessman, so he bought La Chouf in 2006. Of course, Duvel Mortiet also um, invested a lot in the brewery for a bottling line and all, all that. Now bear in mind that up until then, so for what is it, 24 years, they only sold 75 centiliter bottles, so this one right here, and 20 liter kegs. I don't have to tell you that that's not very handy because if you want to sell La Chouf in your bar or in your pub you'll have to put it on tap or you have to sell 75 centiliter bottles and people aren't very eager to order 75 centiliter bottles in a pub or at least not back in 2006. So in 2009 they started bottling in 33 centiliter bottles like this one here and that made it a lot easier for bars to keep it in their range like I said I haven't worked in any pub ever since that doesn't have La Chouf okay then under the reign of Michel Mortiat, they also start uh, competing in contests. Well, actually they competed a bit before that as well. I believe in 98 and 2001, they won some world championships and, and awards. Um, they keep doing that. And in 2011, they are proclaimed as one of the 18 best beers uh, out of a list of 230. And basically the onset of this experiment was 30 experts taste 230 beers and every beer 
that they are unanimously content with so every beer that is recommended by all 30 of the experts is put on the list and 18 of those beers made the cut with La Chouffe being one of them and this experiment was held by a Belgian consumer organization called Testankoop uh, yeah you can say about them what you want but at least they invited to the experts and they didn't do it themselves now the rest is history of course because in that time they brought some new beers to the market some new techniques and basically Duvel never made changes to the beer they took on some new labels and stuff um, mind you that back in those days that was when Johan the brewer from Antwerp Brewing Company that we've seen last week or two weeks ago with the Minerva he was actually global marketing manager of the Vilmortgat back in the time so back in those days he was the one that or his team came up with those hats and those silly uh, merchandise because I also have a range of board games in La Chouffe team and yeah still going strong again full circle there are a few misunderstandings about La Chouffe like what I just said about the gnome why is there a gnome on the label yeah just because they thought it would be fun they didn't want to go heavy they wanted something very accessible very approachable and if you go to the supermarket right now and you see the canned La Chouffe uh, the 33 and the 50 centiliter cans we have La Chouffe in the yellow cans and you have Sherry Chouffe in the red cans yeah if you look at those two keep it away from your kids a huge colorful can with some fruit and a gnome on it honestly I thought it was lemonade at first another misconception about La Chouffe is the name some people think that it is a beer from A Chouffe because it's called Brasserie de Chouffe and they think it's a little village called A Chouffe within the town of Ufalis again not true basically Chris was uh, talking with a colleague at work one day somewhere in the late 70s early 80s and he said blast I gotta find me a good name for the beer something that people will remember something easy something that stands out and one of the guys said yeah something simple like oomph okay so they thought about it and they Frenched it up a bit and that became shoof Chris's biography is also called my shoof story so apparently it's a question that he's had quite often and he will get that question <laughs> a lot more but it doesn't mean anything and it happens yeah more often like late 1700s early 1800s Kodak from the cameras doesn't mean anything people thought it came from Kodak Chrome not true it was actually a foreign company and they did some market research and apparently names that started and ended on a K were great and they needed two vowels in between so they named it Kodak <laughs> same thing with La Chouffe <coughs> Brasserie de Chouffe doesn't mean anything sounds great and they put it in all of their names Oublon Chouffe, Max Chouffe, La Chouffe, Sherry Chouffe, Chouffe Bock uh, and the one we're gonna taste next week Chouf 40 or Chouf 40 what can I tell you about this beer that I haven't told you yet well it is a Belgian strong blonde ale 8% ABV and it is brewed uh, with coriander and some orange peel to make it a bit fruity and herbal at the same time and that was in the 
early 80s revolutionary. Uh, I do believe that a lot of beers, craft beers, newer beers, were loosely based on what Chris and Pierre started back in the days. Let's have a taste. Again, a nice tulip glass designed to keep a lot of aroma in the glass and by moving it, actually push it up your nose. Lovely branded bottle caps, but as we said earlier, any brewery of this size, they have the freedom to print their bottle caps. Hmm, I just see that I ding my glass. No biggie, luckily, because I think I have eight of these. Not counting the little ones and the old ones and the anniversary ones. So that's, of course, a plus for a popular beer and mainly a beer that is sold quite a lot. It's very easy to get your hands on stuff of them. I do believe that I got this from, or one of these glasses, from my favorite bar. They knew I was a fan. I said, yeah, go ahead, take it. Very fresh, very refreshing as well. Slightly hoppy. The color. You could call it gold blonde, but it's actually more leaning towards, yeah, orangey maybe. Very active, because I accidentally poured in a few uh, yeast flakes. I wasn't careful enough. And I see it twirling around in circles. It's like a little whirlpool of beer. So very, very active, a rather high carbon dioxide content, nice white, off-white foam, large bubbles. You can actually smell the coriander through. I'd say it smells a bit hoppy, but I think that's just the interference of the, the coriander with the CO2. Actually, this is for me harder to taste and to put up a flavor profile because I know the beer so well. It's, it's often a lot easier to profile a beer that you don't know or you haven't drunk yet or only once. But I've been drinking this beer for <laughs> close to 20 years and yeah, let's call it 15 years. And it's like a duvel. Step into a bar, you don't know what to get, and you go the safe route, like, yeah, sure, give me a lashouf. I said there are some yeast flakes in there. Uh, that could very well be, because this one expires in four months. So it's not the youngest that I have here. But it is also unfiltered, unpasteurized, and re-fermented on the bottle. It is rather bitter, not as sweet as it smells, and it does have a lovely herbal undertone. But it doesn't scream coriander. And I do think that the orange peel 
softens this a lot because I hear a lot of people say um, they, they taste some fruitiness in it some some citrusy flavors some some pineapple maybe pardon me some lychee um, I think that might very well be the combination of of course the Hester from the yeast slightly but the combination of the coriander with the hops and the orange peel and I think that's what makes this a very very well balanced beer um, I know a lot of hobby brewers that actually start by copying this you can find a lot of recipes online uh, and I'm not gonna say that it's easy to copy but yeah some of the ones that I tried actually approach the real deal It does have a very full mouthfeel. That, of course, eight percent alcohol and quite a bit of carbon dioxide. That will give you a very full mouthfeel. And the aftertaste is rather bittersweet. So, in the aftertaste, the fruit in the, the fruitiness goes down, the bitterness comes up again, and there's this sweet edge around. It really softens up in the aftertaste. Now, I often like to make food pairings with beers and honestly, this is a hard one because it's quite neutral. I've had this with barbecues, I've had this uh, yeah, with anything actually. Um, it's always all right. I would rather specify this beer as yeah having a beer in the sun so have it with a barbecue I know a lot of friends and colleagues that go camping with the canned La Chouffe because they don't want to take glass bottles but they want something good yeah are there good beers in cans these days there are and La Chouffe is the most accessible one uh, you can go to the supermarket in down the street here and yeah get a six pack of these so i would call this a very all-round strong blonde beer actually great for many occasions if you like it okay I am going to leave it at that I am gonna enjoy this La Chouffe a bit further with my good friend Marcel and I will see you guys again next week as usual if you have any comments any questions any anecdotes any stories to tell about you and this beer leave them in the comments uh, if you like this video let me know and if you want to see more subscribe hit the bell icon you'll get notified when i upload something apart from that yeah have a great day guys and cheers <laughs>